do you know what it's more impactful when you're actually showing beautiful things and then they get destroyed worse if it's beautiful creatures and then they die i mean why why would someone do this to another person creature fairy i don't know i don't know and i'm here to talk about that hello beautiful bookworms my name is katarina and welcome to my channel and today i'm going to be doing a double feature review <laughs> Okay, why, why, why the hands? Why the hands? We don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a double feature review because this review is going to focus on a horror talk or a horror topic of conversation instead of just a horror review of two things. But I will also enjoy this moment and take this opportunity to review two graphic novels that I I don't know if enjoy was the correct word that I really suffered with. Let's just let's just say it like that because it was the truth and uh, we want the truth in this channel. So I suffered, you will suffer. Be very welcome. So today I want to take this time with you guys to go over something that can be done in horror and if greatly done provokes in you a myriad of emotional responses and that is when the cute innocent creature person or whatever is either um, corrupted or is shown performing awful actions or suffering awful situations and I just have here two graphic novels that I've recently read in April that I think are peak of the definition of what I'm talking about. These two graphic novels are Beautiful Darkness by Fabien Velman and Carrasco Coit, I think that's the name of this person, and Stray Dogs. And Stray Dogs, I have to see the name of these people on the inside because it's not on the cover. Stray Dogs by Tony Fleeks. Trish Forstner and Brad Simpson. And these two, I read them. Oh, okay. Why are you on the other way? Okay. These two, I read them kind of back to back together. And I was assaulted, and assaulted is the right word, by all of this cuteness and all of the evilness and terrible things going on on both of these. So I'm gonna start with one, then get into the other and put them together because they deserve to be together as something that broke my heart and my possible sanity. So first of all, let me talk to you about Beautiful Darkness. So the story of Beautiful Darkness is really not that complicated. It's about this group of tiny, tiny fairy-like people. So they don't have wings or anything like that, but they're just really small and they live in the forest and eat um, like berries, so for me they're like fairy people, whatever. Um, and they live in the corpse of a small girl. But one day that uh, there's a rain and they have to get out of the corpse because it gets bloated and filled with water and they are in risk of drowning and losing their lives forever. And so they have to get out and so they're lost in the middle of the forest. They don't have a home and they have to struggle to survive. But all of this in their beautiful dresses and in their beautiful um, hairs and makeups and in their beautiful shirts and pants. And if you can see here, they are really cute. They, they're like ballerinas and they have tutus and, and they're just pretty. Look at them, so pretty. And then it gets worse, completely worse. So first of all, of course, as an empathetic person, your view of this is, oh, they lived inside of a little dead girl, but that's okay, they don't know what it is. They're very innocent. And so it's not their fault that the girl is dead. And you start wondering who was the horrible person that killed that girl. And then you start like, okay, so they live there, but they're really nice people. Our main character is really amazing. She just wants to, to live with all of them and to preserve them and to find food for all of them. And then you start seeing horrible things happening. Like, I will give you just one example, but for instance, they are playing around until you see them taking off the paws of a ladybug. 
just like that just because they can just because they don't know what it is and and they find that the bug is funny without legs while it's still alive and, and it's just it, it's the just the position of how terrible it is to see cute little people doing horrible things and the difference in colors and the difference in schematics it's just i felt like throwing up once while reading this and i am not like the, the last cookie in, in the jar but i have seen some stuff in horror movies i am a huge fan of saw and i don't i don't throw up this one i was like oh oh my god <laughs> I didn't, though, but it was extremely impactful. I would say that this is like Lord of the Flies, but with cute fairy people. And that's hideous, because in Lord of the Flies, you're like, okay, they're children, they're boys, and you're talking about the innate violence of people that don't have any rules, and they're seeing themselves lost, and they just want their mothers, and they start to be incredibly violent with each other. But here you're seeing innocent like creatures that don't know anything, that live inside a corpse and they don't even know what it is and so they're okay with that. And then they start perpetrating like the, the most hideous and anus crimes against creatures of the forest, themselves, um, each other and, and stuff like that. And because they are so dumb, all of them. And, and horrible things that happen to them that can mirror something that happens in reality in your society when you fuck someone over or when you're trying to do something and then you have consequences that you weren't prepared for. But it's just, it's terrible. It's extremely dark. And honestly, it, it was a really hard read. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. The art style is beautiful and all of them are beautiful. And then, oh, what is going on? Why? And then I will get back to, okay, I still have hope on them. They're going to grow and live happily ever. Ah! You know, it was like this. It was extremely impactful because of that juxtaposition. And I really enjoyed the story. It has an open ending. Um, and you can think about what happened. And, and it left me think of, thinking about what happened for a long, long time. And for that, I enjoyed it immensely. And then the second one for me was worse. <laughs> if, if it was fucking possible to be worse. It wasn't worse in visceral reactions. Beautiful Darkness had visceral reactions covered head to toe. I could not not have a visceral reaction reading that. But this was worse in the emotion of I can't do anything for this, these dogs, and I want to. And I'm talking about stray dogs, I've shown you the cover already. Um, so, as you see in the cover, apart from this red ominous light that tells you this is horror, as you see in the cover, our main character is a small puppy, a small female puppy, and she's extremely cute, and all of the puppies are really cute. I'm gonna show you all of the puppies, because they're really cute. And I love them all. Look at that, look at all the puppies, they are so nice. Look, 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 puppies, they are so nice. Yes, they are, you know it's not nice life for these puppies. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I am getting off the rails here. But this is a story about our main character, this uh, small little female puppy, and she is just getting into a new home with lots and lots of dogs. But she's a bit worried, she's a bit shy, and she doesn't know, oh my god, I have something in my eye, sorry. <laughs> Proper to the team, to the theme of this. Um, but she doesn't know like what is going on, where she is, and why there's so many dogs, and she's kind of really small and cute, and so she's like, oh my god, so many puppies, they're all smelling me, oh my god, prompt. Uh, and um, one, in that day, the owner, the master, as the puppies call him, uh, puts a scarf on her because she's cold. But when that scarf touches her, she remembers that that was the scarf of her lady, the, wo the woman that first had her. And she starts to remember that maybe something terrible happened to her and that something had to do with her new owner. And so it's kind of like a thriller, but mixed with lots of horror thematics. And it kind of is a horror in the end. 
And so it's her trying to convince all the other dogs that their master is not a good person. Trying to convince them that he did something to her owner and to their previous owners as well, if they had one. Um, but dogs have like this, or at least is the supposed theme of this book, is that dogs don't have a really great short-term memory. They remember long-term like smells and feelings and stuff, but they don't have a lot of uh, short-term memory. And so they kind of like, do you know Dory the fish? They kind of like forget shit um, and they can only be reminded by another. And so it's, it's really complicated. Um, and so you have that sort of amnesia trope, which I normally hate, but here is done so well, mainly because they're dogs. And so we're not expecting them to have a core uh, short-term memories as humans do uh, and second of all because it gives you the atmosphere of is something wrong or are they just dogs you know just like be like okay I'm suspicious of my owner but he's really mean or am I just crazy um, and and <laughs> this starts like that and then escalates to full-blown horror violence and it's not gory it's really not but it has some uncomfortable thematics like the owner if they uh get into this specific house uh, this specific room in the house the owner brings them to the punishment shed and if that's not code word for shit is happening I don't know what is and it's all terrible because you're seeing everything through the eyes of these really innocent creatures that just want like to play with the ball and love the owner and be fed and they start to understand like we are in danger in this house master is not a good owner something is going on and we don't know what it is and how to be alive and how to live and how to do something about this because we're just dogs and the humans don't understand this and so it's just i was on the edge i was just feeling like i wish i could go in there and and help all of these puppies i do believe that this has a big trigger warning for animal cruelty semi on page and that you wouldn't want to read it if you're very sensitive to that because it provokes in you emotions of sadness of disturbing of like oh my god what are you doing let the dogs alone and it, it has a bittersweet ending i tell you that um i like the ending but i also hated the ending <laughs> so um yeah I, I think it's a very difficult graphic novel to read if um you like animals uh also if you like people and you imagine them in in the place of these animals but they're just so innocent in in, in beautiful darkness let me just pick this up in beautiful darkness they look innocent but they do stuff mainly because they don't know and they don't care about it but some of them are not that innocent and you start to see that so it's like a corruption of character um but in here your character is pure your character is innocent and the characters have horrible things happening to them that they can't be free of. And it's just, for me, this was more violent in terms of imagery, but this was more violent in terms of what I was imagining and what I wanted to do to help uh, these animals, which are fictional, so, of course. But, um, yeah... It, cuteness in horror is one of the hardest things to do but also one of the greatest things when you do it because it provokes on the people that are reading and that are watching or talking about it uh, feelings that stay with them for a long time after they finish reading the series or the the pages or the story or, or watching a movie or whatever because they are going to feel dirty and bothered and why did you do this with innocent looking creatures or innocent puppies you know um and it's a question that stays with us even normally if your your emotions are working correctly let's just say you don't go around and hit puppies you know you don't go around and and hurt uh innocent animals but then you think about people that actually 
kill children or each other, let's just say, and, and do horrible things. And then that fucking trope in every horror movie where if there's a fucking dog, he's going to die in the beginning of the movie. And, and it's just, how can human beings do so much horrible things and sometimes we let that slide and we are affected mostly by all of these things that we see on page because like they're cute and they're not what if they're not what 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 if normal people do terrible things why do we have morbid curiosity on that and don't get devastated as we get when we know about some innocent thing going on you know what i mean i don't know if i'm expressing myself correctly but this is a discussion that if you want to have in the comments i would love to but yeah that's my review for these two it, it obviously as you will probably see on my goodreads if you want obviously i gave these uh high praise and i do recommend that if you can and you don't have trigger warnings for like uh animal cruelty for stray dogs and uh Oh, a lot of violence in Beautiful Darkness. If you don't have triggers for those, then I would recommend that you pick this up and read it. If not only to consider the cruelty in the world that is sometimes disguised in um, cute stuff and innocent stuff, which sometimes it's not. So yeah, guys, that's going to be all for my reviews of Stray Dogs and Beautiful Darkness. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe. And please tell me in the comments down below if you've read these, if you're going to, or if you just found them terrible and you don't want to read them. That's also a good opinion and that's okay. You would be wrong. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I understand that this isn't for everyone and you can stomach this, so it'll be okay. And that's going to be all for today. So happy readings to you all. Bye.